Hi, everybody, and welcome to Weekend Game Plan with Marcus Hirsch. I'm Dan Ullman, along with DRF handicapper and analyst Marcus Hirsch. Big weekend in the Mid-Atlantic area. Of course, the major race is the grade one $1 million Pennsylvania Derby at Parks. But Marcus has three weekend game plan selections with some quality races at both Laurel and Charlestown. Let's begin, Marcus, with the Bald Eagle Derby. We're going to throw up the field right now. This is race number six at Laurel on a stakes-laden card, a mile and a half on the turf for three-year-olds. Of course, you can catch Marcus's selections as well as many other DRF handicappers and analyst selections in the text version of Game Plan available on DRF.com. Morning line favorite in here, Marcus, is the number seven. He's no lemon at two to one. This horse is important proved by leaps and bounds since being stretched out in distance, but he's also a one-run closer that at, that's at the mercy of the pace situation. Yeah, that's um, part of the reason I was a little bit against him. I also think he's going to get hammered in the wagering. And what, I mean, maybe it's nothing, but what I did notice was, you know, he ran in July, they worked him back. Grand Motion always works horses back, but generally works horses back during a regular racing pattern on, at three weeks after a race. So that was fine. But then he didn't work between August 16th and September 10th. So something happened. I mean, the horse had, as you mentioned, had got on a good pattern and improved a lot when stretched out in New York. Um, so great. I mean, I, I, those his last two figures are so much higher than his earlier figures that sometimes makes me wonder, I mean, how much of it, I don't know. I'm just not completely sold that he's like a 90s buyer sort of horse as far as quality goes. And then with the interrupted pattern, and the, the lack of pace and his lack of pace. Um, and the reason that uh, I chose this race, Dan, is because I, I was at Colonial Downs for the Virginia Derby, which wasn't a great race, but um, the horse that finished second is here, Jay's Solitude, and he really caught the eye with the way he ran that day. I mean, those fractions are legit. They were incredibly slow. Um, and this horse was well back, came with a really strong run, and um, I just get the sense, based on his pedigree and the way he's been going, that he's got a good chance to get this mile and a half distance. If you look back, he has not really done much wrong since blinkers were at it. He was also gelded during that layoff he shows between April and July. Um, he's been in two really slow paced races, so I'm not gonna hold those figures necessarily against him, the final time figures, because it's hard to run much of a final time figure off the paces that slow. I think you're just kind of guessing how quote unquote fast he is. Uh, and I also have noticed that Eddie Keneally, the trainer recently, his stable has really been rolling, especially with shippers. Um, good Kentucky Downs. I think he, you know, this horse ran well in Virginia. Uh, I just think this horse is going to be um, an undervalued second choice in this race. And I agree that this horse has a tremendous amount of upside potential as well. He's relatively lightly raced, basically a new gelding, as you mentioned. This will be his third start since the gelding process. Right. And I agree. I've been visually impressed with both of his races. Last time out, no chance against that glacier pace. We'll stay at Laurel for race number nine, kicking off the late pick four. We're going five and a half furlongs on the turf, and it is the Laurel Dash. $100,000 is the purse. And you're talking about speed in a race like this, Marcus. The one oldies but goodies has that in speed. Spades. We're going to take a look at his win two starts back in the Ben's Cat when he was able to control the pace. And last time out over yielding ground, he just went way too fast early. Well, I think, I mean, I, I remember watching that race and thinking that the horse looked uncomfortable from the start. He was four to five because he had run, as you can see, looking back farther in this form, such a good race last September over a yielding course at Lower. But as you learn over time, all wet turf horses, even the same turf horse, are not created equal. And a horse that handles one, you know, if he's not a lover of soft ground and a true soft ground kind of horse, might dislike another. And to me, just watching this horse's last race, um, he didn't handle it at all. I think that uh, the race that we've seen, the Ben's Cat, is, is a much truer billing of his ability. Um, this is the time of year. I mean, the Laurel Turf course generally can get very inside speed favoring. And when it dries out, um, there's a period of bright sun, it bakes firm, especially I, I've found in the past through the fall, speed is just really deadly. And this horse, if he breaks from the rail and gets to the front, I, I'm not sure that he's ever going to be caught. He's going to be very, very tough to catch, especially when it looks like the other speeds are sort of mired in outside post positions. And Correct. with a good break, oldies but goodies is going to have those horses in chase mode, and he should be very prominent when the field turns into the stretch. Four to one on the morning line seems like a really nice price on oldies but goodies. Yeah. We'll, 
Well, I have a, I just don't know about the price. I mean, the, the line, I, I, I don't have any complaints with it, but I struggle to, to determine what kind of um, prices it's going to be. I mean, I think he could be, I think he could be close to that. I don't know what your feeling is. I think that's about fair simply because I think a lot of folks are just going to look at that last line and say, wow, he bombed at one to two. He may not be any good or not in form right now. I think that's about fair. Four to one, seven to two, maybe three to one at the absolute light. That's kind of how I saw it. Yep. We'll move down to Charlestown for graded stakes action. Race number 11. Let's start the field for the Charlestown Oaks. And if you want to talk about a wide open race, this is one. $300,000, a two-turn seven furlongs at Charlestown for three-year-old fillies. And the morning line favorite in here is Fashion Faux Pas, who really only has one race on her card, I think, that makes her competitive with this. She sort of exploded at Delaware and since then has come back to earth. Something tells me that Newly Minted will end up being favored for Linda Rice. She's won this race in the past. She's coming off a big win at Saratoga. I do have some information on that. Uh, My colleague, Dave Brenning, who uh, I just spoke with by phone, said this horse is going to be scratched to point for a a race in New York instead. So take her out of the plans, and that hurts some prices. Speaking of morning lines, oh, and there's another one to mention here. Lady TNT cross-entered at Laurel. Uh, Joseph Sharp said that she is running at Charlestown, so she'll be in this race. I don't. I do not like the line for this race at all. I don't think that it's. I don't think that it's accurate. I mean, Irish Mischief at eight to one for Cox and Rosario off a big win and a couple of good buyer speed figures. I just don't see that as being in any way plausible. I think she's going to be a fourth of that price. Also, the horse that I ended up picking and was interested in betting, La Chancla. I'm not sure she's going to be every bit of five to one either, but um, I do think that she might be second or third choice. I think she might be a fair price. That's all I'm hoping for here. Um, I'm not really expecting 5-1, to one, but I am hoping that she does get up to a playable level. And we're going to take a look at her most recent start. This a six furlong non-winners of one other than allowance victory at Saratoga. And she was very comfortable in this race. I mean, this filly was purchased for a lot of money at public yeah. auction. She's an Uncle Mo. They've always thought highly of her. I just think this is a very clever spot for them to try a stakes uh, debut. And she draws a really comfortable inside post position going two turns at Charlestown. Right. And the and as the trainer said, he doesn't he likes having the one hole for her because she's already been inside and taken dirt, but she doesn't seem to mind it at all. Um, and she didn't you talk about her purchase price. I mean, she cost seven hundred seventy five thousand dollars as a two year old. She never even worked. She went to straight to the barn of trainer Rudolph or said, but she just was not she was green and in no way, shape or form ready to be a racehorse a year ago. And she's taken some work according to the trainer, but um you know, he he is, he is gets on her himself a lot as well, and I believe he was on for the workout that I saw online September 8th at Belmont, which was an, I thought an excellent work. She finished really well, went out in 112 and changed. Uh, she does have some pace, but I think she's going to just sit a lovely trip right in behind. I expect that she has the athleticism and wherewithal to make the sort of rally that you need to on a full ring track like Charlestown. You cannot wait, obviously, to the stop, top of the stretch because the race is over before you get on Belmont. I think that she'll start moving, um, you know, coming into that far turn. And I really like the way this horse stretches out and finishes in all of her races. I don't think she's done anything wrong except miss the break in her first start. She hasn't had game problems really since then. I think she'll be just tucked in right in behind what I think is going to be a, a legitimate pace. And I totally agree with what you said about spotting. To try two turns for the first time, you only have to stretch out to seven eights and to jump into stakes company, graded stakes company, but with the cotillion, at the park, sucking away the very top of the three-year-old Philly class. This is a really nice spot for this Philly to um, to take the jump up, I think. Three weekend game plan picks for Marcus. The Bald Eagle Derby. We'll look at Chase's Solitude, the number four. The Laurel Turf Dash. Oldies but Goodies, the number one. And in the Charlestown Oaks, the number one again, La Chancelia. Best of luck, everybody, this weekend.